Today's video is sponsored by Squarespace, a platform where you can design beautiful websites and host your online store. So the forecast was not supposed to be clear tonight, but I tried my luck and I'm glad I did because it's, I mean, the south is perfect. So I'm at Balance Rock in Arches National Park in Utah. There's a bit of a roadside location. So as you can see, there's a lot of cars driving past and light paint in the foreground. So it's making it very difficult for me to focus stack this scene, but I'm trying to do two minute exposures, focus stacking through the scene. And then once I've finished focus stacking, I'm gonna pull the tracker out and uh, get the sky exposure. Hopefully, I mean, it's pretty quiet now. Hopefully no more cars, but it's still quite early in the night. So loads of people are just leaving the national park. And I've got this incredible gnarly tree. So I've got the wide angle out. I'm getting up close and personal. And it's very imposing in the scene. And it just frames the rock and the Milky Way nicely. But my exposure's just finished, so I'm gonna start the next one. <laughs> So I've stressed this a lot in the past, but if you go into a location that you've never been to before, you have to do some daytime scouting in order to find the best compositions. I always look for interest in flora or rock formations or something that can help me tell a story about the landscape that I'm exploring. So for example, I found this really gnarly tree and then I'll pull up my smartphone and take some reference photos, test out different compositions and see what works. Then when I come back at night, I'm ready to go. I'm not wasting any time fumbling around in the dark and I've got my composition ready and waiting. So this image was a focus stack, so it's nice and sharp from front to back. I have a tutorial on my YouTube channel about focus stacking. And then for the sky, I use a star tracker. And I use the same settings for the sky and the foreground because it makes the blending much easier later on in post-processing. So I've made it to Double Arch. I've got a window to the Milky Way. It looks incredible. I'm gonna do a really wide vertorama. I'm shooting with a 14 millimeter lens and I'm gonna pan up and up and up until I'm looking pretty much directly overhead and uh, at least get one of the arches in, the other arches over there. So whew, a little bit out of breath because uh, it's a race against the clock. The moon is gonna rise in about 25 minutes. And I need to do really long exposures because it's incredibly dark in here. So to get any detail, I need to do three minute exposures, I think. And um, yeah, that doesn't leave me with much time. So, <laughs> but it's so beautiful. No wind, the crickets are chirping away. The sky is actually incredible. There's a very, very thin bit of mist giving a bit of star glow effect but I'm just gonna keep cracking on and get this bag before the moon comes up. And I think when the moon comes up, I might do some star trails as well. And I'll leave that run in. And I might go back to the van for a little nap because there's nobody else here. The park is so busy, but there's nobody at this spot, which is perfect. a.m. Astronomy Twilight has finished. I'm just going back to get my camera, if it's still there. <laughs> I hope it is. I've passed out as soon as I got back to the van. Whew. I just passed out. Because I was set an alarm for five, otherwise I'd still be sleeping. <laughs> ah, fingers crossed. Right, so it looks like the Star Trek did okay. It got three and a half 
hours of star trails and twilight kicked in, so it's perfect. Fingers crossed. <laughs> So the next night I headed to one of the most iconic locations in the US, a delicate arch. But before I headed up there, I wanted to see if I could capture one of my bucket list shots, petroglyphs under the Milky Way. But before we get to that, did I tell you my book, Photograph in the Night Sky, is available to pre-order now? And you can pre-order it from my website, alanwallacephotography.com, which is hosted by the sponsors of today's video, Squarespace. If it wasn't for my website, I definitely would not be able to be a full-time photographer. It's a way for companies and clients to find my work and sign up to my workshops. And it's a place where you can purchase my book or my Astro Workflow Lightroom presets. And that way I can make money from products that I have created. And that's what funds my life as a full-time photographer. Squarespace is amazing, it's super easy to use. You can start with one of their award-winning templates. You can drag and drop things to your heart's content. It's super easy, you don't need to know any code. The websites look really, really professional. And you can have a blog, galleries, an online store. You can have member-only areas as well, a new feature, which is pretty awesome. But if you'd like to give Squarespace a go, head on over to squarespace.com forward slash Allen. Start a free trial. If you're happy with the website and you want it to go live, use the code ALLEN for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain name with Squarespace. So prior to coming to Utah, one of my bucket list shots for this location, well, for Utah in general, was petroglyphs. I'm obsessed with petroglyphs. I just find them so fascinating. Um, it's like a snapshot into human history, but it's something physical, something that somebody created hundreds or even thousands of years ago. They just, I just love them, so. Sadly, the weather had other ideas and that left me with a bit of a dilemma. As you can see, there's a beautiful clear skies behind me, but then there's no clear skies in the direction that I want with the petroglyphs. And there's still a lot of cloud covering the Milky Way core as well. So. But with the skies in the south clearing, I decided to bail on the petroglyphs and go for Delicate Arch, because the moon was going to rise in about two hours. And given how popular of a location it is, I was expecting it to be super busy with head torches everywhere, but to my surprise, there was only one other person there. This is Winching from California. I really expected lots of people to be here, but it's just me and Winching. We've got the place to ourselves. The clouds have cleared. Milky Way is looking great. I think we've got about 40 minutes until the moon rise, so just taking some distant shots of the arch with the Milky Way. And once I've finished this exposure here, we're sort of doing the tracked sky. I'm gonna go a little bit closer to the arch so I can get a shot through the arch of the Milky Way and then stand in the shot for a bit of perspective as well. For this shot, I did a vertical panorama of four landscape shots. I used the same settings for the sky and foreground, but used the star tracker on the sky. I didn't put much time into this shot because my friend wanted to do some light painting stuff so this was just a quick single exposure and I was quite surprised at just how well it came up. So I helped Winchin out with his light painting endeavours and after a few shots he was on his way back down. Winchin has just left and as you can see the moonlight is starting to sweep across the landscape. It looks absolutely stunning. gonna lie on the rock here and enjoy the moonlight making its way across the landscape so I'll be able to do a time lapse with this camera. <clears throat> So 
So if you're wondering why I only went for 15 second exposures here is because I wanted to get a time lapse out of it and I didn't have much time. So I went for a short shutter speed and I'll share that time lapse over on my Instagram account. So make sure you're following me over there. I'm also hoping in the next few months to finally start my next big project, which is going to be an online masterclass in Star Trails. So stay tuned for that and sign up to my mailing list if you haven't already. Uh, so this has been a much more pleasurable experience than... I was anticipating, I was expecting it to be really busy here. Lots of people with head torches and people coming and going, but I guess the hike is enough to put most people off and maybe the forecast wasn't convincing enough for most people, but I'm a little bit gutted about the petroglyph shot, but it's what it is. Maybe I'll come back to shoot that shot, but I don't know, there's other places I want to visit and uh, time is running out, so. So this must be about the fourth time that I've come back to the petroglyphs at the Delicate Arch Trailhead since I filmed that vlog where it was cloudy. And every time I've come here, most of the sky has been cloudy apart from the north, which I needed. Um, but tonight, which just so happens to be my last night in USA, seems to be the night. You can see some stars. It's looking good, a bit of cloud in the south, but whatever. I need the north, I don't care about the Milky Way core right now. Oh, oh man. I don't know what else to say. I'm just going to bag this shot because this is the one shot that I wanted to get. Not this specific location, but to photograph petroglyphs under the Milky Way. Such a bucket list for me, so... I'm just going to go crack it on with the shot. So I began shooting and there's a barrier there so you can't get too close to the petroglyphs but I started with a 24mm vertorama. The problem is the petroglyphs were just so small and insignificant in the frame. So I switched over to a 50mm and waited a little bit for Andromeda, the spiral galaxy, to rise from behind the rocks and it just came out great. The petroglyphs are bit bigger in the frame, they're a bit more obvious now, you don't have to point them out and uh, I was just so happy to bag this shot my last night. I'm buzzing, I mean I'm not, I know I don't look or sound excited right now because I am exhausted, I'm so tired, it's my last night after a oh, pretty hardcore trip for like the last month and a half. Try and fail and to come back three or four times and to fail and fail and fail. And this is exactly why I couldn't create composite images. Like many people would have just pasted a Milky Way image above that cloudy image I took two weeks ago. I just don't get the joy in that. I don't get any... Was that a meteor? No, probably Jupiter. <laughs> but um, I just don't get any joy in that. Like having failed so many times coming to this spot, now you get a real taste of what patience and success can feel like and uh, you just can't mimic that emotion in photoshop so that's why I don't do composites anyway I'm gonna wrap this up because I just need to go get to uh, need to go to bed I'm so t I can't even speak anymore ah uh, I'm gonna go get some sleep because I gotta drive to Salt Lake City airport tomorrow so Ah, thanks for tuning in to another vlog. I've already signed this vlog off, so yeah, just good luck in case, guys.